I'm very delighted to be joined today by Antoine. Lovely to see you. Ross Mann like. from um, uh, K-Ross, not Kairos, by the way. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, environmental, environmental intelligence. I mean, people talk about generative AI a lot these days, but environmental intelligence and how we are dealing with the climate crisis is obviously of key concern. Um, Kairos is a very, very important company, just to put you, everyone in the picture well, before we start, because you are one of the few companies that has a, uh, a contract with the United Nations to look at uh, CO2 and methane emissions, which we're going to get onto in a minute. That's correct, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. There are three things that are important in environmental intelligence, which is to track greenhouse gases, so CO2 and methane, and uh, we've won a, a contract with the United Nations to really, for the first time in history, be able to detect, quantify, and attribute methane leaks to polluters. So it's the first time in history that we can see a gas that up to now was unknown for the scientists or for the policymakers. Let's just go back in time briefly. You were originally a, an oil industry engineer uh, worker, working in, with the oil industry, effectively. And I think it was in 2016 you decided to look at the fact that there was such a dearth of data about um, oil, but obviously, but also emissions in particular. Partly because you thought that uh, pricing of the market was all out of whack, but also you became increasingly concerned about the environment, environmental impact, correct? Yes, I, I've created a consulting firm and a non-for-profit uh, around technology for the energy transition in the context of Schlumberger. And it was clear to us uh, that there was a huge gap of data. We were driving the Monte Carlo at night with no lights. Uh, because of the geopolitical nature of oil and gas, it's a very secretive industry, there is not a lot of data available. And we, have, we are facing the, probably the most complex challenge that mankind has to, to face. Uh, the climate change, the energy transition, and we have no data. So it, that, it was very clear to me that we had to, I had to create a company that will provide decision makers with the right information around the energy transition at large. So a lot of people would have thought, right, we need to look at this. Um, we need to, you, you, you could have launched a satellite company, for instance, but you didn't. You took existing information and started to work on it. How did you set about that? We did a lot of exploration of all data sources, and it, was, it, it went very clear relatively quickly that satellite was really the game changer because it covers the full world. Like uh, CO2, you know, emissions have no frontier, and it's the same for satellite. So we have something that has no frontier, is global, and provides something that was impossible to see before. So we also use other sources of data, like local ones, uh, ground sensors, but the main source of information around climate comes from satellite. And uh, the European Union has, has uh, sent an incredibly powerful set of satellite constellation, which is called Copernicus, that provide all the key parameters of, around climate change that we can use now in Keros. Can you give us um, an idea of the problem? How, like, how bad is the data about emissions from uh, the hydrocarbon industry? Is it, is it very out of whack? Is it very unreliable, or what, what's, your, what's your company's uh, position? So you have two main greenhouse gases, CO2 and methane. CO2 is well known. You cannot hide a ton of coal. So this is pretty well understood. What was completely below the, the radar is methane, which, is, which has almost the same warming power globally than uh, CO2. If you look at the global warming up to now, CO2 is 0.8 degrees and methane is 0.5, so same order of magnitude, except that it was impossible to see it before. And the primary source of methane is what? Fossil fuel, agriculture, waste. That's the three main sources of methane. Uh, we know pretty well where they come from, from on the agriculture, but it was completely uh, unknown for the fossil fuel industry and the waste industry. So. What are people doing with your data? Are, they, are the regulators using it to fine uh, hydrocarbon oil in the oil in industry? Are they uh, setting new policy? Where is this data going? How is it being used to fight the climate crisis? So there is, a, there is a policy in the US to fine 
um, operators that release methane in the atmosphere, it is in the building, and uh, we contribute to that. Um, the key thing for now is uh, through the contract we have with the United Nations, the United Nations, uh, when we see a methane leak, inform the government and the operators so that they can uh, first fix the leak and for the reg regulator send a fine if they want to. Now, there, is, there are fines for emission of methane mainly in the U.S. for now. Is there a, not a problem with your company in the sense that some of your data you are actually selling to the oil industry itself, correct? Not really. And, and some of it you're selling it to regulators. So does that put you in an invidious position? No, I mean, we position ourselves as independent data. So we have uh, oil companies as, as uh, customers, but for, for their trading arms, which is, you know, an investor like uh, any other. So it's like an hedge fund. So we, we really want to create independent data. Uh, and our so you're seen as a trusted broker? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right, so that's keeping you away from... <laughs> Uh, the conflict of interest, potentially. Yes, which exists, obviously, but uh, we've chosen to create independent data and sell that to regulatory bodies and investors, which are our two main uh, uh, customer types. So we've obviously had a very long period of, of, of boom in, in, uh, in the tech industry. New space now is a real thing. Uh, you're, funded by, you're funded to the tune of uh, $78 million by new space investors, such as New Space Capital, Opera Tech Ventures. So um, there's, been, there's been a big boom in this sector, and there are other players, uh, US players um, in this space. How would you set uh, Kairos apart from those other players? We've chosen to focus on energy and environment. We have competitors in the US who focus on agriculture and real estate, and they, they are like us, source agnostic, so they can use all the satellite imagery that is possible. But we have chosen to focus on energy and environment, and they have chosen to uh, focus on uh, different verticals. So it's a complementary more than competition. Right, so uh, you've got a, um, you, you're doing different things in the marketplace. Yes, yeah, because in, in our business, you, we use a lot of AI to, to train our, to, we train algorithm with ground truth, and uh, we use a satellite imagery to, to create a measurement of methane or height of a tree of something that is relevant for climate change. But to do that, you need to master the, the satellite imagery process, which is very complex, but you also need ground truth, so you need to understand what you are talking about. And it's when you use the ground truth and the satellite imagery process the right way you, that you create the AI model that will create a reliable proprietary measurement that we can then distribute to our customers. And so, um, obviously, the, the phrase generative AI is everyone, on everyone's lips these days. Do you use uh, Gen AI and large language learning models in your business? Um, and how relevant are they? How important are they? So we provide reliable measurement to decision makers, people who make decisions for investment or regulatory bodies who will send fine. The last thing we want is hallucinations or fakes. And LLMs can create hallucinations or fakes, except if they are trained on a very well-defined data set. So we use LLM on our own data set uh, and we trace where the information comes from so that we create uh, an interpretation of our data in a way that is uh, certain. We really don't want the uh, fake news part of uh, LLMs, which is really a problem. Well, is there such thing as fake news or fake data in, the, in what you're doing in satellite imaging? Satellite imagery, there is no deep fake of satellite imagery at this point in time. It's, uh, and we use government data, so we use European Space Agency or NASA data, and they are very well protected. It might come one day, uh, for sure, but for now, no. Right. Um, but how do, you, how do you partner with the industry? Do you open source any of your data? Do you, are there APIs available for other partners to involve, involve themselves with your business? So we open data for research. For instance, we have, um, we've detected a few thousand plume of methane uh, in 2019 and 2020. We've published in Nature, and we have opened the, the, the source for researchers. We want to uh, check our research and uh, do their own research as well. So we have an open source policy for um, the, what I believe are uh, public goods, which is essentially the, the detecting the, the polluters around the methane. So, um, but where can, you, where can you take this? Like, what do you see as coming in, in the future in terms of 
either the detection or the technology itself or um, you know the you know or the or the regulatory side the next step for us is to for this information to be used at scale um, we have been uh, publishing or we have been detecting methane plume for uh, two years now the uh, the satellite was launched three years ago, so for two years we have been publishing, and we don't really see a decrease in this plume when they are very easy to fix. There are very few countries which are doing that. You, are, you have less than 10 countries where we have this problem of large methane leaks. The cost of eliminating these leaks are, is zero or sometimes negative because you can resell the, the, the gas. Um, so uh, easy to fix, uh, no cost, we know we are doing that, so the, it's known actors, state actors or private actors, and it's extremely harmful because it's really, uh, you know, warming this planet extremely rapidly. And if we start eliminating methane, we can save 0.5 degrees of global warming between now and the end of the century. Uh, I am a bit frustrated uh, to see that we know who is polluting, and collectively we fail. We are failing to address that. If you look at COVID, we have been successful at only in COVID. Today, we are failing at climate change, and we are really failing at doing a very easy thing, which is to stop man-made methane leaks, which are very harmful for the environment. Would you say that if we solve the methane problem, that that would be the magic bullet to solve the climate crisis? So I won't say magic bullet, but it's certainly the lowest organic fruit. It's 0.5 degrees that is feasible now, and basically there is no Paris scenario at 1.5 without only methane now. So it's absolutely necessary, and it's massive. If we divide by a factor two, the methane emission, man-made methane emission, it's 0.5 degrees, and we know that it's technically possible. So there, there is no technical barrier to save 0.5 degrees, and there is really a call for action for everybody to understand the issue and put pressure on the system for the system to use the information that is now available. Do you detect any uh, kinds of emissions from the so-called renewables industry? Are there, are there, is, there, is there any fakery going on in how electricity has been uh, created? For instance, in the UK is notorious for building gas-fired power stations uh, to create electricity, uh, and famously, uh, it's a very sort of pretty inefficient way of doing it. What, what sort of what, what, what about the, the, the other, the new industries? Are there, are there moni is there monitoring to be done there? The, for, uh, in the UK and in Europe, there are no large methane leaks. It's very well controlled. There is really no problem for, um, in, um, in the UK and Europe. Uh, the main uh, countries are the US, Russia, Algeria, Turkmenistan, uh, Kuwait. So, I mean, uh, these are well-known countries where we see that. We don't see that in, the, let's say, in the UK and Europe. The, the key thing uh, in, um, in Europe and the UK is about trees and are, are we planting trees as we should? So the, the other part of the equation is carbon sinks. And, uh, and is that something you track as well? Yes, we count every single tree in the planet. So you're tracking trees. Um, are you tracking tree density or what, what, kind, of, what kind of things are you So we, calc we, we count trees when they are sparse, sparse, sorry, sparse, uh, yeah. um, and uh, we calculate the canopy height when it's uh, in very dense, like in the Amazon basin. So we cover the full Amazon basin and all Africa as, as well. And we count trees, we measure the height of trees, so we can see when uh, a single tree is cut in the planet, we can detect that. So you can literally track the height of tree growth? Yes. Well, that's pretty good. What do you expect will happen in the upcoming COP talks? The, this COP should be around methane, really uh, acting together, uh, the, the producers, the importers, uh, I mean, all society, to, to act on methane. It's very easy to do. It's 0.5 degree, we have to do it. So, and the, obviously, the fossil fuel industry has a vested interest to do that. So hopefully, we'll, uh, we'll be able to, to move from pledges and good, uh, goodwill and uh, uh, to real action where uh, I think importers, con you know, con importing countries should fine or should tax uh, energy that is imported uh, if it has embedded uh, a methane emission. 
Well, hopefully those talks will come off well, and I, I think it's exciting to see such an interesting and innovative company uh, involved in those talks and supplying, supplying that pretty crucial information to the United Nations to make those decisions. So, but anyway, for now, thank you so much, Antoine Rostand, CEO and co-founder of KROS, and from me, Mike Butcher from TechCrunch. Uh, have a good event, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs>